Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here on this Tuesday. Kind of an odd day in the week, right? November 28th, 2023, about 12 10 p.m. here, California time. Uh, we do have a 1.5 here into the West Coast area. That's the latest earthquake. First, going to cover some uh, development on the sun right now. A near X flare kicking off here from 3500 now if you watch my videos here the past couple nights you'll know that is a sunspot region i said to keep an eye on 3500 is this complex structure down here this was actually from last night today's image the latest magnetogram image does show quite a bit of complexity here within this core of this sunspot which is directly facing earth uh, and that did just kick off a near x flare about as close as you can get up here to the X flare category, although not quite there in the numbers. Looking at a very strong M flare, M 9.8. But again, you know, might as well just call it an X flare because that's pretty darn close. Uh, again, that's coming off of a sunspot region that is directly looking at Earth in perfect position. I'm not uh, certain though if this has a uh, a CME associated with it yet or not. Uh, we'll have to look at some other models here throughout the day see if anything did blast off from this strong flare that's kicking off either way we're looking at a uh, pretty significant radio blackout across portions of the pacific here east pacific southeast pacific and that uh, is due to that uh, flaring that's taking place currently uh, which is at an m6.8 right now so we're just coming down uh, from that peaking there just a couple minutes ago now this radio blackout is along the lines of uh, high frequency and low frequency navigation systems that can be affected out there uh, specifically over this area that would be in the highest uh, category uh, for the potential blackout goodness either way that's a, a beautiful flare directly facing us so i still think it's got potential there just looking at the magnetic uh, structure that it harbors even today uh, it does look like at is continuing to grow uh, quite dynamically compared to all the other sunspots here that are pretty much they just all just decayed and uh, pretty much went bye-bye this whole group up here if you remember a few days back here was awesome looking coming around the northeastern limb i thought for sure we were going to see some uh, x flare potential or at least some strong flaring from that sunspot well that completely dropped out uh, once it got into visible view here so we're left with the one I picked here a couple days ago, 3,500. Uh, we'll watch that uh, for some further flaring. Just because it peaked out in M flare right now does not mean it's done and over with. Uh, I've seen flares in the past peak up to an M flare, drop a little bit, and then significantly, significantly spike back up to an X flare type uh, event. So we'll continue to watch that. Uh, overall threat right now shows 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 35, X flare around 5% chance, but... Uh, Keep an eye on 3500. It does harbor quite the dynamic setup there. That one's uh, not for sure what's going on with that. That did produce, looks like it did produce earlier uh, an M3.4. And now we got an M9.8. This one's offline. Not for sure what's going on with that. Hopefully Kevin jumps onto it. But um, yeah, so keep your eyes on it could see some further development and some stronger flaring it is in perfect position here to be geo effective that's for sure all right uh, let's get back into earthquake activity going to cover the um i'm going to keep this for my thumbnail uh, iceland activity here no new update today in terms of the icelandic met office meteorological office here uh, from yesterday they still basically stated that things are um roughly the same as they have been they haven't seen any major uptick uh, in terms of new development and a look at the last 12 hours of earthquake activity You're looking at about 60 earthquakes here according to these folks the area of interest of course down here in the Grindavik area of Iceland that is the area of interest in terms of the magma intrusion very close to this town down here now most of the earthquake activity is still north and around the Hagafell uh, area that's the region where they're expecting the potential eruption to kick up here. Uh, again, no new developments, though. Just kind of watching that. 
another earthquake swarm over here uh, across a totally different portion of Iceland. Either way, I'd say uh, things are definitely showing some elevated movement on a large scale across the Iceland area. All right, California getting a little bit of earthquake activity. I did see the spike come in, this little 2.1. Uh, came in roughly about the same time or shortly thereafter um, as that uh, flare that came in. I did see it spike up here on the Petrolia station. Well, now it's offline, so I'm not for sure what's going on with it. I don't know if it went into some type of default mode or defunctionable mode, but it's offline. Hopefully they get that back. And that's just a little bitty earthquake too. One point or 2.1, excuse me. Uh, there has been some other Quake activity following that uh, looks like around the Clear Lake Volcanic Field here. That's uh, obviously the uh, hydrothermal operations there with the uh, whole process involved in creating energy. A little 1.6 further down here into the uh, coast range near the Bay Area. Pacific Northwest, uh, minor movement up here outside of Seattle. Although this one here is on the... Seattle Fault Zone. That's a 2.0 near Chico, Washington. That's never heard of Chico, Washington. I've heard of Chico, California. That's kind of where I'm at right now. So, yeah. Either way, tw uh, 30 kilometers deep here on that fault system. Now, this one here is very capable of producing some large damaging earthquakes. And uh, I think they measured potential up around the 7 range or higher uh, for this fault system that runs directly underneath Seattle. All right, moving down to the rest of California here. Last night, we are watching some elevated movement here across Southern Cal in terms of the multitude of quakes. Now, it looks like we did see one more three-pointer last night, just before midnight, my time, 3.5. That is on the North American side of the plate boundary here in the San Bernardino Mountains. We have noticed a little bit of uptick here in the microquake department across the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. Also, a little bit of further movement here. In the Borrego Springs area early this morning, just after 2 o'clock or so my time, another 3.2 here. So things are somewhat elevated in and around the San Andreas Fault. The southern section here is not something to be messed with because I'll, I don't know what it's going to take. It may take a couple more earthquakes or it may take a three-pointer right in an area uh, to create a domino effect to release the strain that's been built up here. Well over 300 years of sufficient plate strain uh, and the geologists seismologists scientists and uh, everyone alike tend to agree that an 8.1 magnitude earthquake is capable on this fault system here so we don't want to be messing around that area e eventually it's going to happen right it's coming question is when uh, so yeah just best be prepared Yellowstone National Park nothing showing up there I'll go check out Yellowstone here real quick see if we have anything major going on doesn't look like it. Um, still seeing some uh, what looks like very small microquake activity, and this has been somewhat consistent over the past couple days. Uh, they're not picking up on it, though. They, meaning the USGS, are not showing anything in terms of the earthquake activity. Uh, but it's there. Definitely some spikes showing up. Now, those are very small earthquakes, limited and localized to the Mary Lake seismograph station here that you see on the screen. All right, what else we got here? Anything major going on across the rest of the country? Texas, Oklahoma, a couple of small earthquakes out there today. Looking at the big picture, what do we got overnight? Well, pretty good clustering going on once again here across the Fiji area. Um, obviously, this region does not stay quiet for too long. Uh, latest activity shows a 4.2, almost 600 kilometers deep here into the Tonga Trench. Overnight, we did see some further movement bouncing back and forth here between deep activity in the trenches and shallower adjustment along this plate boundary where we expect the strain to build. Obviously, the Pacific plate moving to the northwest here. That's this whole area right here. The arrows pointing in the general plate movement. Deeper activity here in the Tonga region. Look at that um, average slip rate, and I'm sure some may be more than that, 240 mm per year. It does not take a lot of... Uh, a lot of time for uh, earthquakes to build up in this region. Either way, deeper activity does tend to stress regions upstream. Uh, but if there's not a lot of stress upstream, then we're looking at the uh, potential of 
uh, further migration in that pressure transfer across the plate boundary where we see deep activity in the Tonga Trench, shallower earthquake activity there around Solomon Islands and the Vanuatu area, uh, kind of like what we're seeing in the last 24 hours. A little clustering going on here on the southern end of the Philippine uh, Philippines Trench right here. Looks like um, some 4s and 5s, the latest of 4.7 quite active specifically down here i know last night we were looking at some movement around the kuro kamchaka and the Aleutian trench well looks as though that has somewhat been uh migrated down to the south now uh, last night we did pick up another 4.6 here into the kuro kamchaka trench that one pretty deep though 121 kilometers i still think this area has some potential to see some mega quake activity there's a movement last night from Alaska or in the uh, Lucian Trench area, Fox Islands area. Uh, they did see a 5.6 and a 4.5 yesterday. So far today, it looks like a 4.3 and a 1.7 within this area. Uh, either way, Pacific Plate definitely on the active side today. Uh, almost around the entirety of that, uh, of that large plate out there. All right, uh, over here now, we've got a subduction zone region showing some movement near the Barbados area region 39 kilometers for a 5.1 earthquake now this region can see some uh, pretty large earthquakes just for now though we got a 5.1 we have been noticing a little bit of swarming going on up here across the Puerto Rico trench in the last few days but overall it looks like things have died down there in the last 24 hours South America region up and down the Peru Chile trench shown some activity although most of this is from yesterday it looks like quite a few fours stirring up uh, Hawaii, big island out here. See if we got anything major going on. Doesn't look like it, at least according to the to the uh, USGS map. But uh, let's go check it out here real quick. See what's going on. I'm just excited to get some uh, some flaring activity finally. I don't think we're done yet either. Uh, Kilauea volcano is currently not erupting, according to the latest update that was put out by the. Uh, Hazard notification system for volcanoes on Kilauea Volcano. So things are just as is. Uh, looks like maybe a little bit of deflation uh, near this uh, summit tilt meter. Let's go check that out. Check that out myself. It has been on elevated status here for quite a while. And now the tilt meter stations are going to be these little red lines. Yeah, we did take a little dip. Remember I said that last night? That uh, we'd look forward to this dip and then a return of inflation. It's always, it's been like that here for the past couple months. And you can see some of that going back in the last 30 days here of chart data. This is inflation there around the summit. It, it almost looks like there's a, a triple inflation spike here on each. If, we're, if we were to go back further, you'd see that on the other ones as well. Uh, but there's that triple inflation followed by... A couple days of deflation, and then it looks like, you know, further inflation. It's been that trend for quite a while. And we're getting those same type of dips going on, and now we're starting to recover back from those those three dips. Although this one's in a stair-step pattern here towards higher, uh, higher inflation. Uh, so it's interesting to see where this is coming or where this is headed to. Obviously, we know that magma is um, accumulating quite nicely underneath this area of Kilauea Volcano without making its way to the surface here. Now, I believe there's some type of blockage going on. Uh, potentially, the the normal plumbing system here to the Lava Lake area, I think, is blocked off. That's why we've seen most of the earthquake activity confined here south of the summit region with huge inflation developing across this area. Um, the highest it's been in over five years, and that um, is even when we had these last couple eruptions here at Kilauea Volcano, uh, the inflation right now is higher than even when and before those eruptions took place. So definitely something big time brewing out here. I'll uh, continue to watch that and see where this is leading to. But it can't be good, right? The more magma, the more inflation that's accumulating under here, the more likely that we could see definitely more explosive type eruption out here across the region. Um, there's always that potential and um oh i can't remember what year i gotta look this up today i, I was gonna look it up a few days ago when i mentioned about it how 
Um, you know, not, not everything is always, um, you know, just fissures opening up and fountains of lava. There has been explosive type activity here um, before. Not in the recent past, but uh, definitely historically. I'll have to look into that and see if I can pull that back up. See if I can cover that tonight. So we'll watch that area for sure. But overall, goodness, looks quite active out here uh, in the region. West Coast definitely shown some elevated activity as well. Um, what do we got for some severe weather? I've seen a couple storm chasers there posting the potential of severe weather on the... Uh, uh, when is this? Thursday, I think. Thursday. Got the potential of some severe weather threats out there in Texas. Mostly southeastern side of Texas down here. For uh, the tor tornado potential as well. Again, this is a couple days out. We'll probably check back here tomorrow and see what we're looking at as uh, far as tornado potential. But uh, obviously it's turning into uh, maybe a severe weather day there Thursday across that region. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Um, again, this, this beautiful sunspot region here does have that potential of creating maybe some X flares. So if it's going to do it, it better do it now while it's in position. We've seen almost a near X one right here. All we need is a uh, massive CME blasted off from this, er uh, this area. Definitely be uh, geo-effective. And uh, create some nice auroras, I'm sure, uh, if that were to happen. But right now, I think the aurora forecast is kind of minimal. These guys are forecasting maybe a, a glancing a glancing hit from uh, a filament eruption here a couple days ago. That's expected on the 30th. I think that's going to shoot towards the south more uh, than, than the Earth-Sun plane that where we're at right now. Because it was kind of directed down more south of our region. But uh, either way, it looks like maybe a G1 class storm come around the 30th. We'll cover that and keep an eye on that as well. In the meantime, enjoy your Tuesday. Take care. Stay safe out there. And uh, we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on this evening. Have a good one.